Can an AC using 100% coral based weaponry perform? Greetings Ravens, Fiot here and in this video I'm gonna try to answer that question. Disclaimer, I am not trying to cosplay an AC geared mech. I am trying to use all coral based weaponry without making any compromises whilst retaining a somewhat functional state for the AC overall. If you want to cosplay as one, you can just slap on all the hull equipment and you're good to go. Here we're going for balance and functionality. So stick around and let's find out if we can spec an AC with coral weaponry whilst keeping it functional. For the purposes of this build, we will be using the IB CO3G, the NGI Triple O. This is because all of these components, all of these weapons are extremely power hungry and I didn't want to go with a minuscule frame that would get shredded in a couple of seconds. I wanted to have above 10,000 AP and some pretty beefy defenses. This thing's EN capacity is unparalleled, is humongous. The problem is that its EN recharge delay is also horrendous, it's 3.68 seconds. It will usually go above 4 seconds for most frames, but I tried to optimize it. Still, 3.68 is pretty bad. Its saving grace is that its post-recovery and supply is also insane. So, as soon as you start recovering, you'll get a huge chunk of energy that will be readily available. Energy firearm spec is great as well. It is not the best but this is a coral generator and we want to be thematic. As you can see, it says prototype coral based internal combustion generator. So we will go with the NGI triple O for the purposes of this build. When it comes to our FCS, we're going with the IB co 3 f WLT001. This is for a very specific reason. I am taking the coral missile launcher out of the equation because it sucks donkey balls and focusing on rifles and the redshift sword. So this has a pretty healthy balance of stats for close, wrong and medium range assist, focusing on medium. Most battles will be fought at medium ranges because if you're any further away, your rifles won't be hitting jack shit. Enemies will be easily outrunning every single of those shots. So we went with this one to be able to fight at medium range and also benefit from some close range assist because Redshift fires projectiles and we need good tracking for them. For booster, we went with the IBCO3BNGI001. This is a very good choice for a couple of reasons. Its thrust is strong, its upward thrust is also strong, and since we'll be using reverse joint legs, we want to be able to jump high. Its QB reload time is nothing to scoff of, below one second by far, and its QB thrust is great, and QB jet duration is also good, meaning you will be jittering left and right pretty effectively, and also the distance you will be traveling will be good enough for you to dodge fire. For the legs we want spring chicken, there are a couple of reasons for this, I kinda threw the idea of good attitude stability out of the window if I wanted to go for mobility with this kind of energy requirement, so I was like, better jump left and right and avoid fire than getting hit and not getting staggered as easily. This can support a lot of weight and has a pretty healthy AP stat, so it will serve our purposes well. What I want you to focus on in this build is that we are going for the weaponry and the generator first and foremost, we want to keep it thematic. The rest is up for debate and I would very much like to hear your ideas on optimizing. Nachtreiter is the Hans, I'm sure if I butchered this but I have no idea how to pronounce it, it's probably German. I picked this for two very simple reasons. Both fire specialization and mill specialization are great with fire and specialization being maxed. This pair of arms has the best tracking potential in the game and we want this because enemies will be dashing left and right and we're using single fire weapons. Our core is the IBCO 3C Hall 826 and we picked this because it has very healthy AP stats without crazy energy requirements. It's a very good fit for this build. For our head we go with my favorite, the VP44D, 
healthy overall stats, not too hungry when it comes to energy requirements and not too heavy. As you can see at the bottom right, I am kinda close to the sweet spot on all accounts, so this is a pretty solid configuration. Now the most important parts. Let's start with the right hand. We're using the CO3W1 WLT011. This is the prototype Coral Beam Rifle that you see here has two levels of charge. One is a charged beam that will deal extra damage and two is the supercharged beam that will force you to manually aim it but if you can land most of this beam, you will be dealing tremendous damage. Problem is, this is mostly a boss killer for PvE. Don't expect to use this in PvP. You can keep this beam on the Balteas, but I doubt you can keep it on any decent AI control AC. So it is what it is. After every charge shot, you are overheated. And that takes me to my right shoulder weapon. Don't worry will also go to the left arm. We're using the NB Redshift here, the experimental coral rifle that creates small explosions at the point of impact and much bigger explosions when you charge it. The idea here is that if one overheats, you swap to the other and finish the job. I could have used the coral missile launcher, but it tracks so badly, it's like a meme, man. On top of that, I'd have to sacrifice my FCS to account for missile adjustments. I don't want that. That's a piece of shit. I'm not gonna use it. The left arm is the redshift blade. It's self-explanatory. Is the coral sword, and we will be using it. It's very, very good. No complaints here. Had some disparities when compared to the moonlight. The Moonlight is better for charged attacks, but the Redshift is better for individual attacks. So there is a fine balance here. It's a fine sword. It's gonna serve you well. Now for your left shoulder, you will be using the prototype Coral Shield. This is a 360 omnidirectional shield that will protect you from attacks, soaking up most of the damage. As far as shields go, this is pretty much the easiest to use. It's just a bubble around you. It will soak up damage and doesn't have a very demanding initial activation window. I wanted to give this build a bit of nuance, so instead of going all rifles on the back and shit like that, I thought we'd be using a shield to change the pace of combat. Now let's take this baby in the training area and test the damage output. So we will be training with the dummy here, fixing the camera so you can see easier. And we'll be setting some values for the damage. First and foremost, a full-on attack with a sword. Damage is nothing to scoff at and builds a lot of stagger. When it comes to stagger, this is where we will be running into some problems. A single shot of our main gun barely builds any stagger up. And remember, this is a single fire weapon that overheats. Swapping to the other rifle, we see that we are getting better build-up and better sustain, but it will overheat after pretty much 5 shots. That is when weapon racks come into play. You switch to the other one and keep building it. You're not gonna build anything crazy with this thing and it will also overheat pretty quickly, but if you're missing just a little chunk of stagger to get the job done, this will serve you well. Remember, if you charge this thing at one level, its damage is pretty great, but it's a charge attack and builds a lot of overhead. Things are better with the other color rifle, the one that resembles the Nebula though. Its stagger is insane and damage is also good. It's also quite resilient when it comes to charge shots overhead. So you will build about 50% of its hit gauge, but you can keep going and without even pacing yourself, you are almost at this trainer AC stagger limit. Don't forget we have a blade on our first hand and you can finish the job with whatever tool you feel like using. Now this is a trainer AC, there is no point of me using a shield here of course, but as I said the shield is omnidirectional. So it's gonna be fine, as long as you don't overheat it. Three quick applications will overheat it, so you have to pace yourself. 
changing guns, charging and shooting will get the job done and then you can follow up with the sword for some hefty damage. Now let's be realistic about this. This is not the craziest damage you'll ever see in this game, but this build is 100% thematic and also has its strengths. Laser and generally energy weapons deal better direct damage in AC6 than kinetics and this build is also specced to augment the power of laser weapons to a certain extent. It's gonna deal damage, just not the most damage you can get out of any possible build. Not by a long shot. It is quite beefy, 10,490 AP, overall resistances are balanced, and it can sustain flight for quite a big amount of time because of the initial jump and also the dashes are quite functional not optimal and i would very much as i said like to hear your opinions on this thing because i'd really like to see if we can get the best possible coral powered ac out there thank you so much for watching sub like and hit the bell for more content like this consider supporting the channel on patreon or other platforms and until next time be well stay frosty and always strive for perfection Cheers!